Shalom family. Today is Sunday, April 14th. We're actually going to go ahead and go into some articles again to discuss some things we found through this past week. Uh, as always, uh, have your antenna on, use discernment as you're listening. We'll talk through some of these articles as well and uh, give our thoughts on these things as we go through. Uh, with that all being said, let's get started. First one says one dead, several injured after 18 wheeler crashed into Texas Department of Public Safety office and the driver's been arrested. Let's see here what this video shows. We're told that there are multiple serious injuries after a tractor trailer crashed into a Department of Public Safety office northwest of Houston, and there are signs that it was intentional. We have Rosa Flores joining us now from the town of Brenham where this happened. Uh, Rosa, tell us what you're learning. Well, there are, um, this is a very active scene, Brianna. We're expecting a press conference here shortly, but I want you to look over my shoulder so you can see exactly what's going on right now. You can see that 18-wheeler. It has some sort of load in the back, and it looks like it hit the building at about a 90 degree angle. That portion of the building that you see is missing. That is the entrance. That would be some glass doors, some glass windows that are now gone. You can see members of the police department there uh, right in front of the building. Now, traffic has slowed down a bit. A lot of rubbernecking here. A lot of curious drivers that are trying to see what is going on. I can tell you that crime scene tape has gone up. There are multiple agencies on site. I can see members of the Texas Department of Public Safety Safety, the Washington County Sheriff's Office and Brenham as well. We understand that there are several serious injuries. One individual uh, was airlifted from the scene. All right. Yeah, it seems like the world's getting crazier uh, by the moment. Uh, it's kind of crazy to see this type of thing happening. Let's move on to the next one here. So it says Iran and Israel are already at war in Syria, but it could get much worse. And if you heard the news uh, yesterday, there was uh, attacks that took place from Iran through drones. But let's take a look at uh, this article here and, and listen to this. All right, it doesn't look like anything to listen to, but uh, looks like some scenes from some attack, looks like. All right, let's take a look here. Just over 13 years after Syria was first plunged into civil war between the government and an array of insurgent factions, the country stands today on the front lines of what has the potential to be the region's most serious conflict in decades with the risk of drawing in the United States directly. You know, it looks like we are on the verge of World War Three, And if uh, if it hasn't already started already, I mean, we already know about the Ukraine and Russia, the stuff that's been going on. I mean, there's some things concerning uh North Korea, South Korea, Taiwan, all these different things. So uh, we're, we're it looks like World War Three is at the door. It's uh, kind of crazy the timing that we're in. Uh, but we continue to look to the most high and trust him that he has us and he's watching over us. And what we just need to do is be aware of these things and be prepared for all the different things to come and realizing that uh, we are in these last days. OK, we're moving on to the next story. Mom accused of leaving two young children home alone for days to go on cruise. It says the Houston woman was charged with abandoning a child with intent to return. Let me scroll down here. Let's watch this video. This one has a video. From all you can eat buffets aboard a cruise ship to the back of a Precinct 5 patrol car, Lakeisha Woods Williams is accused of abandoning her children. The 29-year-old mother was taken to jail tonight. The details of the allegations, almost hard to believe. So that don't even make sense right now. According to court records, neighbors at Williams' luxury high-rise apartment building, the McKinley, sounded the alarm. They said they saw the mother of two children leave with luggage and bags last Thursday, April 4th, and never return. On Tuesday, deputy constables with Precinct 5 responded to a welfare check at her apartment and found her eight-year-old son and six-year-old daughter home alone. The unit smelled of urine, records state, and was in disarray with trash and leftover food strewn about. And they told the deputies their mother had left to go on vacation on a cruise. These children were definitely left unattended for many days um, and, and put in serious harm's way. Williams is charged with abandoning her children with intent to return. Deputies did find a web camera and cell phone that the children said their mother used to check in on them. Is that 
sufficient. <laughs> Absolutely not. Prosecutor Keegan Childers says there is so much potential for danger. For them okay, to we're for gonna themselves, stop it right there. We get the gist of what's going on in this article. Yeah, it's crazy that a mother would leave uh, her children home alone and then be selfish and go on a cruise. I mean, how much care this woman has for her children to just leave them there. And, and you know, it's it's unfortunate the days that we're in and the, the selfishness and the focus on what someone wants to do rather than thinking of others' needs and, and especially children who can't take care of themselves. It's, it's just sad and unfortunate. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next story, which is the bird flu is spreading to more farm animals. Are milk and eggs safe? Okay, let's go down. It says a bird flu out outbreak in U.S. dairy cows have grown to affect more than two dozen herds in eight states just weeks after the nation's largest egg producer found the virus in its chicken. Says health officials stress that the risk to the public is low and that the U.S. food supply remains safe and stable. I'll continue. Says at this time, there continues to be no concern that this circumstance poses a risk to consumer health or that it affects the safety of the, inter of the interstate commercial milk supply, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said in a statement. Here's what they need. Here's what we need to know about bird flu. It says... Which states have found bird flu in dairy cows? Here are, the eight, here are the eight states. Idaho, Kansas, Michigan, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, and South Dakota. It is known as the type A H5N1. And it has been detected in a range of mammals over the last few years. So let's see if there's... There's no video on that, but it's just something to let us know that there are some things going on with the food. And to that, we say, just make sure you're praying over your food and also taking this to the most high because he can reveal to you what you need to avoid and um, keep you safe. All right. U.S. issues travel warning for Israel with Iran attack believed to be imminent and fear Gaza war could spread. It says Israel is bracing for a worst case scenario that U.S. officials believe could materialize within just hours. The possibility of a direct attack on Israel soil by Iran in retaliation for a strike almost two weeks ago that killed seven Iranian military officers. Iran has vowed to take revenge for Israel killing its commanders who were hit by an April 1st strike on the Iranian embassy in Syria's capital. Well, we already know that took place, and uh, let's take a look here. Uh, that actually took place last night, so the article is actually a few days old, but let's look here at this uh, breaking news. Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. We are following breaking news. The IDF says Iran has launched drones towards Israel. This is not unexpected. It's in retaliation for a strike in Syria this month that killed seven Iranian military officers. At the consulate there, Iran blames Israel for that strike. Israel has not taken responsibility for it. I also want to let you know that we are hearing from the Israeli military. They say that these drones will take several hours before they are actually there in Israeli airspace. We have also a statement from the IDF. They said a short while ago, Iran launched UAVs from within its territory toward Israel. The IDF is on high alert and is constantly monitoring the operational situation. The IDF Aerial Defense Array is on high alert, along with IAF fighter jets and Israeli Navy vessels that are on a defense mission in Israeli airspace. The IDF is monitoring all targets. Additionally. All right. So as we mentioned, this uh, took place last night or yesterday started uh, in the U.S. I mean, last night U.S. time. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Wars, wars going on all around, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be more that's going to take place as time goes on. Uh, here's just some more information. Iran launches dozens of drones, attacks on Israel. Skip that. Russia moves supersonic missile warship to Middle East after Iran attack on Israel. It says Russia has called for restraint from both Iran and Israel as a wider war in the Middle East becomes a real possibility. Russia has set a Navy frigate, Marshal somebody another armed with Kinzhal supersonic missiles in the Mediterranean Sea via Suez Canal 
Just at just hours after Iran attacked Israel with hundreds of missiles and drones, the Kremlin confirmed the ship's presence in the area, adding that it will continue performing the task assigned to it under the expedition plan. This comes as Iran attacks Israel with over 200 drones and missiles overnight. So, yeah, I can imagine that uh, eventually the U.S. is going to be brought into this as well. So I'm sure we'll hear more in the, the coming days uh, ahead. And uh, we'll go from there. Scripture warns us that, uh, I believe it's in Matthew, I'm not sure, but it warns us of wars and rumors of war in these last days. So as we see these stories pop up and hear of these different countries going to war against each other just remember that we are not to be alarmed but we are to keep our shalom because we know who we belong to and this was already written that it was going to happen so whether it's over there or here in our land we know who we belong to so we keep our shalom and keep our eyes focused on the most high Says the world in its end time headlines, the world stands on the brink of all out war. Israel's brace for a wave of drone attacks from Iran. The Israel Defense Force IDF warned that around 11 p.m. that at least 100 drones had been launched. This was followed by an announcement from Iran's state run news agency that ballistic missiles have also been launched. Since then, there have been there has been some apprehensions on the streets, but daily life has continued pretty much as normal. Although tonight, during the time tonight, the IDF updated instructions for the population on the precautions they need to take. So it looks like life is continuing to go on, even though they're in the middle of uh, airstrikes by drones. But maybe they have their eyes on high. I don't know. But war is taking place and it looks like they're continuing, it says, to live life as normal. But there's war taking place there. Okay, moving on to our next story. Texas map shows where state will become underwater from sea level rise. It says coastal areas along Texas stretch, Texas's stretch of the Gulf of Mexico could be vulnerable to being consumed by water as sea levels rise due to the effects of climate change modeling suggests su modeling suggests we're not one to to ascribe to the climate change thing but this is what the article says it says by the year 2100 the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc estimates that estimates there will be between 43 and 84 centimeters 1.4 to 2.8 feet of sea level rise, but that an increase of two meters, 6.6 .6 feet, cannot be ruled out. So I don't know if this has a story to it or not. Uh, let's keep looking. Okay, this here says there's a modeling of how Texas coastland would look if sea levels rose by three feet with areas of new ocean denoted in light blue and low-lying areas prone to flooding highlighted. All right, let's take a look here at the next article from Blaze Media. It says, scientists just test-fired a cloud device over American soil with the ultimate aim of blocking sunlight. I'm not sure if you heard this. I mean, there's uh, plenty of articles, I believe even from last year, the year before, several years where uh, Bill Gates has been either trying to block out the sun or paying for uh, technology, research, etc., to block out the sun. Let's take a look at what this says here. It says the U.S. Hornet may be decommissioned, be a decommissioned aircraft carrier, yet it has nevertheless become the launch site for a controversial new war in the skies. The Marine Cloud Brightening Program's Coastal Atmospheric aerosol research and engagement project well, that's a mouthful led by researchers from the university of washington took to the deck of the hornet tuesday to launch streams of particles into the sky above the san francisco bay it sounds a lot like the uh chemtrails that they're doing every single day all across the country and probably across the world if you've seen the planes flying by in this blue sky and all of a sudden there's you know these streaks in the sky uh these aren't it's not water vapor this is them spraying with uh 
uh, aluminum and barium. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy. But poisoning us. Uh, let me continue. Their ultimate objective is apparently to block and reflect sunlight in hopes of limiting global warming. Okay. Yeah, as as we mentioned, uh, we don't uh, subscribe to the climate change, global warming nonsense. Meaning, the climate goes up, it goes down. It's uh, just just part of how the world is. It's this this whole global warming stuff is ridiculous. But we'll continue. C A A R E researchers behind the geoengineering scheme opted not to announce their experiment, reporting reportedly citing concerns that there might be significant backlash. You know, who, of course, you know who wants them spraying more things into the sky. Uh, let's uh, continue on here. Do you buy packaged meat or bag fruit from Walmart? If so, you may be entitled to a settlement payment. It says a group of class action plaintiffs claim Walmart overcharged them for weighted products. Walmart has denied any wrongdoing. It says if you bought packaged meat or bagged fruit from Walmart in the past five years or so, you may be eligible for a settlement payment. The retail giant has agreed in principle to pay back a fraction of what affected customers spent on the purchases as part of an agreement with plaintiffs who claimed it illicitly inflated the price of weighted goods at checkout. Walmart has denied any wrongdoing, saying it agreed to the settlement to avoid a trial. Uh, let's see here. According to the settlement website, anyone who can anyone who can produce a receipt of a purchase or can attest to having made a purchase of packaged meat, poultry, pork, and seafood and or bag citrus products like organic oranges, grapefruits, tangerines, and navel oranges is eligible to receive a payment. The purchase must have occurred between October 19, 2018 and January 19, 2024. The settlement entitles such claimants to 2% of the total cost of their purchased goods up to $500, though the cap may change once all claims have been filed and reviewed. So if you have receipts from those times, if you purchase from Walmart, see what you can do. There's a website there. This is a... Uh, where this come from? This article is on NBC News. So if that has interest to you, check it out. Maybe you may be able to get some money back. Okay. Next article says insurance companies use drones and high altitude balloons to spy on homes and deny coverage. This is a report. It says... Home insurance companies are increasingly using aerial images from drones and even high altitude balloons as a tool to dump properties seen as higher risk, according to a report. Angry homeowner, homeowners have reported losing their coverage after being told they have damaged roof shingles, debris in the backyard, or having undeclared items such as swimming pools or trampolines, the Wall Street Journal reported. And it says no home is safe from surveillance. Let me see if there's anything. This are, this part of the article says homeowner insurance companies are dropping clients clients policies based on aerial surveillance images taken by drones, according to a report. Uh, that's basically all this article is about. So let's move on to the next one. It says gas prices are on the rise again. Here's where experts say they're going next. Budget conscious motorists may want to fill up sooner rather than later, as prices at the pump are likely headed higher in the, re in the near term. The approach of the peak driving season and the annual switch by refineries to more costly summer gasolines have driven has driven up the national average for unleaded to $3.63, according to AAA. It says prices have been edging higher with motorists on average paying $0.06 cents more per gallon than a week ago and $0.23 cents more this time last month. Still, the cost of filling up is in line with where motorists in their wallets stood a year ago when a gallon of unleaded came to $3.61 AAA data shows. Uh, it says, why are gas prices rising? Underlying, underlying the higher cost of gas are routine factors, including refinery maintenance, the switch to summer gasoline, and rising demand. Okay, so that's basically all on that story. 
All right. So, yeah, if you need gas, sir, I mean, it's best to just get it ahead of time before the prices rise up. And, of course, you're going to have to continue to fill up, but get it before it goes too, too much higher. And it's always best to have your tank full anyway. I mean, when you start decreasing on uh, your gas starts to go down, just try to keep it full. You never know when when you need to uh, you know, get up and go somewhere. And it's best to just be, be as full as possible. All right. So here's one that says, uh, here's why it's a travesty that dollar stores like the 99 cents stores are closing. It says, uh, when Daniel Campos heard that the 99 cents only store were shuttering all 371 locations late last week, a surprising wave of emotions hit him. As a child of immigrants, Campos, a Los Angeles native, said the 99 cent store was an institution, a place where you could get a dollar Hot Wheels toy or an ice cream bar while your parents stocked up on groceries, household cleaning items, and chintzy decorations for family parties. Uh, let's see what else is here. Looking at, uh, as I scroll through, doo -doo -doo -doo. dollar stores like the 99 cent store are surprisingly polarizing. According to a 2022 USDA economic research report, more than one in 10 households in the U.S. deal with food insecurity, meaning they can't access the food that they need. With inflation and the end of pandemic era, era, era aid, those numbers only rose higher. Uh, scroll through, see if there's anything else worth looking at. Uh, something here for TikTok to spinning. Let's all keep on going. All right. Dollar stores. Uh, we already read that, so move on. Uh, the magic number to retire comfortably hits a new all-time high. It says inflation has made the cost of just about everything in the U.S. more expensive, including retirement. A new study published by the Northwestern Mutual found... By, by Northwestern Mutual found the magic number that Americans believe they need in order to retire comfortably hits 1.46 million this year, the highest level on record. The figure represents a nearly 15% jump from the 1.27 million that Americans said they needed in 2023, easily outstripping the current 3% inflation rate in the country. Over the past five years, Americans, uh, the number has surged 53% from uh, 951,000 reported in 2022 according to the financial services firm. Let's take a look here with this uh, video. And the survey says you need $1.46 million to retire comfortably. Ashley Webster is in the villages in Florida. You're talking to the diners there and the village people. <laughs> What's their magic number for retirement? <laughs> Well, that's a very good question. It's changing all the time, Stu, and as we know, it's heading upwards. 1.46 million, a lot of people falling short of that. In fact, a federal survey released, and I want you to show you this. This is for people aged 55 to 64. Uh, according to this Fed survey, 43% of those have no savings. And as you mentioned, the villages here is the fastest growing urban area in America. But the ability to retire getting harder and harder. Come with me. They were outside the Flying Biscuit Cafe, and I ran into Roger here. Roger, great to see you. And Roger's best friend, uh, Ripley, who Ripley is apparently already retired. Roger, are you retired? And if so, uh, is the high cost of living hurting? Um, no, we don't really, I don't really see it here that much. Yeah. Uh, but um, did you have to put off retirement? Did I have to what? Put off retirement. Oh, um, well, I'm 80, so I, and I just retired. You just retired. Did you work all the way through to ATM? Yeah. Why? Yes, I had my own business. Your own business? Yeah. But a lot of people are having to work longer even though they don't want to. Absolutely. I see people here who are cashiers and who are working as waitresses and people all over to get an odd job just to supplement their, in their income. All right, we'll stop there on that. So, yeah, it's uh, inflation's hitting everybody. I mean, no matter what age gap you're in, no, no matter what range you are, what, uh, how long you've been working, I mean, it's the cost of living is continually skyrocketing. Rocketing, and uh, even older people are having to work longer just to be able to make ends meet. And it's, uh, it's sad and unfortunate and uh, doesn't look like it's actually getting any better. And we have to know that we are living in the last days, so we remember that it's the Most High who supplies all of our needs according to our riches and esteem, according to His riches and esteem. So when we hear about stories like these, I don't know too many people who have a million point four uh, 
1.4 million dollars just laying around but we do have the most high who is everything he's he he owns everything and he's able to supply us really well he's a he's a great father so we are not really concerned about these things when we we, we put this information out there just to show what's going on in our time to to discern the times that we're in with that being said moving on to our next clip uh article bank of america says the copper supply crisis is here it says there's a lack of copper says strategist at bank of america copper has thought to be headed toward a supply crisis as the world adopts electric vehicles and other greenification measures and now that crisis is here says bank of america metal strategist led by michael widmer the much discussed lack of mine project is becoming an increasing issue for copper. This along with investments in green technologies and a rebound of the global economy should lift prices to 10,250, uh, I don't know, like T per ton, I don't know, $10,000 US 465C per pound by the fourth quarter, they say, an upgrade of 8% from their previous view see if there's anything else here about that okay so copper crisis yeah, our next article it says cancer rates increasing in young people due to an accelerated aging due to accelerated aging according to highly troubled troubling new study says accelerating aging when someone's biological age is greater than their chronological age could increase the risk of cancer tumors that's according to new research presented this week at the american association for cancer research annual meeting in san diego california it says historically both cancer and aging have been viewed primarily as concerns for older populations this person says MPH, a graduate student at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, and one of the study researchers told Fox News Digital. So there's a video for this. Let's click this video. ...high, but the number of overall cancer deaths is dropping. Fewer smokers, early detection, improved treatment all contributing to that. So the U.S. is getting better at treating cancer, but we're falling behind on preventing it. Let's bring in Dr. Mark Siegel for more on this, and nice to see you. I'll throw some numbers your way here. Uh, Two million new cancer cases, as we mentioned, about 600,000 cancer deaths. Among the estimated new cases for men, about 30% prostate, 11% lung, 8% colon and rectum, for women, breast 32 percent, 12 percent lung, and 7 percent colon and rectum. Does that match up with what? Correct. You have? And here's the headline. The headline is lung cancer. We're doing a great job. We have saved, by the way, four million people over the last since about 1990 with all of these interventions, early screening, and stopping smoking. Stopping smoking being key. Not only have we prevented lung cancer a lot of the time, but when we find it, we're finding it earlier now. We're taking it out with a robot before it spreads. Huge improvement in five-year survivals of lung cancer. But the flip side of that, you were already alluding to, which is colon cancer, especially in young people, is on the way up. Prostate cancer, uterine cancer. Why is this? Obesity. I think simply we're gaining weight as a society. We're more sedentary. Our diets aren't as good. There's more preservatives in our food. All of that. So we're smoking less, we're, but, but we have a problem with lack of exercise. And, and obesity all leads to inflammation which leads to cancer another point is that our insurance system is focused on disease not on prevention in other words the more people that are sick the more people that they have that they can then give an intervention to and and, and premiums go up we're a disease oriented system rather than a health so the numbers system. not getting okay i'm gonna stop it there and i think he makes a really good point in this that it's more it's not not enough research is done when they do these research uh when they talk about these different things with cancer and other diseases not enough is done for prevention but more so there's a push more so to go towards the medication the medical side of it um the other thing about it that's interesting about this is accelerated aging which 
I haven't, I've never heard of that. And like, there is something out there that many believe is the reason for younger people getting cancer. I'm not going to mention it here, but it's not accelerated aging in the sense of people getting older uh, when they're young, aging faster. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, I, I'll touch on it for a second. I'll say it in a way that can be hopefully understood without actually saying so. We all know what took place over from 2020 to, you know, even to present day with the poke poke thing. So the solution that took place is a lot of things that have happened because of that. And uh, it's causing all kinds of, of issues and many people, including uh, early deceased and, and so on. But uh, just just hear what we're saying without us actually saying it, because there's but there is an aspect, though, as as, as he mentioned about our health and taking care of our bodies and the things we eat and being watchful of what we eat and being aware of what we eat. So uh, that's a whole nother huge topic. Uh, but we have to take care of our bodies. We have to buffet our bodies. We have to work on our bodies. Um, yeah, so there's some interesting things in there, but um, got you got to listen to the most high when concerning what you eat and what you put in your body. It's, it's very important in these days with all the, the fake stuff that's being made and created for us to digest we'll say it that way all right dietitians reveal the hundred unhealthiest foods in your supermarket including margarine pickles and stock cubes a top nutritionist ranked the hundred most unhealthy common grocery items some of the items like bottled water and fruit juices might surprise you it's interesting if you ever look at some of these bottled waters and they have all these ingredients i mean if if it's water why is there just not water in there There's, it should be water Scroll down. R- rigorous nutritional analyst of America's most popular food items has revealed the 100 most unhealthiest foods. A team of U.S. dietitians have forensically studied nutrition labels on hundreds of products bought at grocery stores and take out joints. While some of the culprits may not surprise you, such as fatty ice cream, potato chips, and cookies, there are many items that you may have assumed was in fact health. Or I should say healthy, I would think. That be, that's because it's not just the calories, fat, and sugar that determine if something is healthy, the registered dietitians behind the analysis says. For instance, low-fat spreads contain potentially harmful oils, while even some types of oatmeal are packed with sugars. Here are the 10 most surprising foods on this list ranked by the top registered dietitians and author Lauren Maneker for Eat This, Not That. So bouillon cubes spike your salt. Uh, microwave popcorn, high in bad fats. Go out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Bottled water could mess with hormones. Diet soda linked to cancer causing chemicals. Healthy smoothies are full of sugar. Uh, Margarine is high in bad fats. Pickles contain concerning preservatives. Canned soup is high in salts. Instant oatmeal contains added sugar. Fruit yogurt could be packed with artificial flavors. You know, one thing when it comes to all these different foods, if when you go to the grocery store, if you can't pronounce it, you might not even want to mess with it because it's probably something that's a made up chemical that's added to the food. So and when you're looking at your uh, grocery, when you're going grocery shopping, you start looking at these different uh, items you're purchasing. Look at the ingredients. Most people carry a phone with them. I'm pretty sure you do as well when you go grocery grocery shopping. I mean, most people don't leave home without their their cell phones. When you go and you start seeing things on these labels, look it up and see what is this. You know, you look at these things, you see colors like yellow six or blue this or green that, red this. Don't get these things. I mean, at least you should try not to get them. I mean, I can't tell you what to get and not to get, but just be be aware that these things have chemical. Some of these things are chemical uh, laden ingredients that affect our bodies adversely and we have to be aware that a lot of the things that we eat are the reason why there's a lot of sickness and inflammation and and uh, different disease that takes place in the body so we've got to be discerning when it comes to what we buy and we got to you know pay attention to these things and these things also many people might not realize but these things also 
can affect your behavior and your thoughts and the things going on in your mind. So that's another thing to be watchful of these type of ingredients because these chemicals can have caused different reactions in your brain that causes behavior to be out of line and cause you to be in a way or to act in a way that yeah you get what i'm saying can cause a lot of problems and issues yeah yeah so just be aware be watchful and uh you know do your best to start thinking through these things one of the things that we do and we're, we're trying to do better in this and we'll just be transparent about it is you know we, we, when we go to the store we try to pray and ask the most high lead us as to the things that we buy lead us where we're to go uh sometimes we you know, we, every time we leave, we pray before we go out and just ask the most high God to lead us. One of the things that we want to do better in is when we before we even buy something is like just see if this is something that we should be getting. And, and just to get the sense, is this something that because the most high God knows what is in all of these foods? He knows whether we should be eating something or not eating something. And uh, we need to do better with it. Uh, but certainly we we're, we would encourage you as well to pray about the things before you buy them and. And if you feel uneasy about something, most likely you're being led not to get something. So, um, like I said, we have, we have to do better as well. So we're not saying, you know, we're perfect in it. We, we definitely need to do better. And when we go out to make sure we're aware, we definitely read the labels and look at the ingredients. And sometimes we miss it too. We, we looked at something the other day and we're like, oh, I didn't even realize this had something. I don't remember what the, the ingredient was, but, um, you know, so we brought it back to the store, but it, uh, yeah, you just, just have to be aware and and be watchful especially in these days and these times because there's a lot of sneaky things going on with uh food the scripture says to acknowledge him in all of our ways and with the way that some things are labeled food and it really isn't and uh they say it's edible it really isn't that's one of the things we want to keep in mind if we acknowledge him in all of our ways he will lead us in the way we should go keep that in mind going forward that's right all right. Uh, is it safe to keep your cell phone in your pocket? No, of course not because of the radiation, but let's read. Experts explain the risk and what to do if you're you're worried or concerned about it. Let's see. He says, where is your cell phone right now? If you're reading this, your phone is probably in your hand. But as soon as you're done, there's a good chance you'll stash it back in one of your pockets, like more than half of Americans, according to the 2017 study. It's something we do rather mindlessly, but cell phones are high powered devices that emit a low level of a type of energy known as radio frequency radiation I, i'm not going to read through this whole article I, I don't suggest you put your phone in your pocket that's not not good i mean especially men you have to just be aware that there's a lot of uh, radiation that's going you know through our bodies as we you know look as we have our cell phones in our pockets it's, it's going out and you have to think of where your cell phone is man if you put it in your pocket uh, and same for women. I mean, we have some major organs in these areas. And let's take a look here at what, at what this says. Here. It says, are there any other health concerns about where you carry your cell phone? It says, while a few animal studies have suggested that high levels of cell phone radiation could damage the lining of the uterus, eggs, ovarian fo follicles and embryos and may even harm fetal development. None of these findings have been replicated in humans. The more pressing concern, according to Davis and other experts, is male fertility. Research shows that high levels of, of smartphone radiation can damage the engines of the sperm called the mitochondria, explains Davis. They die three times faster than natural. A 13-year study on adult men conducted in Switzerland suggested that cell phone use may be linked to a lower concentration of sperm and lower sperm counts. Davis sus suspects that sperm are particularly vulnerable to the effects of cell phone radiation because the highest abs abs absorption in the body will be into the male reproductive organs and the testes in particular because there is nothing to protect them. Although male infertility is on the rise, there's simply not enough evidence yet to say whether cell phone radiation is a factor in this trend, much less a cause. We believe it is, regardless of what this says. Uh, there's so many things about cell phones and hidden things about cell phones that, you know, maybe we'll have to do a video on that. Uh, we'll see in, in the future uh, about radiation. Let's look at here. It says this, the safest way to carry a phone is off, Brown says. That may not be functional for many people, but to try to keep it off the body, meaning in a fanny pack or immerse for men and in a purse or another bag for women. Brown and Davis advise keeping phones off when possible or at least in airplane mode with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, which reduces the amount of radiation the device emits because it's transmitting fewer 
uh, EMF signals. So, uh, again, it's you, you really, you, I don't, I mean, this is our thought. You don't want to put it in your pocket. I do it by my, you know, I had a bad habit of putting it in my back pocket. I used to carry my front pocket, but I put it in my back pocket, but that's just as bad, just having it in the pocket. I, I know there's women who, some, <laughs> we've seen it where they, they carry it in their, their bra. You know, it's like, you know, how many women are putting it there and those signals are going right into the tissue of, of their body and causing potentially cancer, you know, as uh, time goes on. So just just be aware of these things. I mean, you may already be aware, but do what you can to protect yourself because uh, these these RF, or EMF signals and radiation signals are are heavy coming out of the phone so be aware it's also harmful to the body um many people uh i was watching a news story not too long ago and one of the newscaster or host of the show was was talking about the fact that she can't have children and stuff like that not saying that that's the case but due to what we just read this could cause infertility issues and so cancer infertility all these different things that are harmful to the body so we definitely want to be careful with our phones where we place them and try to keep them as far away from our bodies as possible okay next story up we have jamie dimon diamond dimon says america slept while china stealthily established itself as an economic economic powerhouse it says Jamin, Jamie Dimon used his annual sharehold, shareholder letter from J.P. Morgan Chase to highlight America's n need to engage with China, a nation he says has established itself as a potential superpower with the influence to rival that of the U.S. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here. Says over the last 20, 20 years, China has been executing a more comprehensive economic strategy than we have, Diamond added. The country's leaders have successfully grown their nation and, depending on how you measure it, have the first or second largest account economy in the world. So, basically, this story is saying, you know, watch out, U.S. China is right there, ready to take over. So, we need to be prepared. Also, we do realize that, you know, with CBDCs and digital currencies and, and things like that, that the dollar is, you know, headed to a, a fall. And uh, one of the things you want to do is just pray as we get into these last, as we're in these last days, because there's a lot of changes that are taking place to, become, to create this one world government, one world system, one world financial system as well. And we need to be prepared as best as we can. Uh, and hearing the most high and being led to have uh, understanding on what we're to do during these times. We can't wait till the problem is here to then try to scramble and figure out what to do. We need to be prepared beforehand. We need to to listen and, and hear the most high and be led by the most high and start to make changes and do things better so that we can be prepared and ready. See, the world puts out information before beforehand, but they know most people aren't paying attention because they're so focused and busy on just trying to make ends meet that they don't even see the things that are happening. And they, they the world elites, they put stuff out there, but it's hidden. A lot of times it's I mean, it's not hidden in a way you can't find it always, but it's hidden in a way where you're just not thinking about or looking looking at it because you're so consumed with just trying to live life that you may not even have time to even consider or look at some of these things. So with with all these things, we need to get. In all our getting, we need to, like scripture says, get understanding. And we need to get understanding by spending time in his word and spending time in prayer and listening to him as to what we are to do in the days that we're in so that we can be ready and prepared for the things to come. Agreed, agreed. Okay, our next story. Barges break loose on Ohio, Ri Ohio River in Pittsburgh, damaging a marina and striking a bridge. More than two dozen river barges broke loose from their moorings and floated down the Ohio River in Pittsburgh, striking one bridge that had already been preemptively closed and damaging a marina, officials said. The boats eventually were pinned to the riverbank or went over a dam downstream, officials said. We have a video for this, so let me set that up.
looks like this is where the I'm guessing these are the barges where they were pitted against that dam that they were talking about oh yeah you can see the barges here clearer okay okay moving on to the next story yeah, one thing to note on this is interesting. I mean, there's been several bridges that have uh, been hit over the past few weeks. Uh, you know, not necessarily as bad as we saw in the uh, Baltimore area, but it seems to be happening more than uh, it should. We, well, I mean, it shouldn't happen at all, but it's definitely uh, concerning for sure. Stubbornly high U.S. inflation grew stronger than expected in March. Says surging gas prices and sky high mortgages and rent sent inflation rising more than expected in March, adding to Americans' prolonging and painful battle with high costs. That could force the Federal Reserve to keep its punishing rates higher for longer. U.S. consumer prices picked up again last month, vaulting to a 3.5 increase for the 12 months ending ended in March, according to the latest consumer price index data released Wednesday by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's up considerably from February's 3.2% rate and marks the highest annual gain in the past six months. Wednesday's report further highlights that the path to lower inflation remains extremely bumpy and continue to be a drag on Americans' hard-earned finances and that any loosening of monetary policy might not happen soon. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, our dollar, our, our dollar is worth less. You know, there's shrinkflation. I mean, I'm sure you've seen you go to the grocery store and you used to buy something that maybe had 16 ounces in it for a certain price. And and now it's, you know, 13 ounces in it, you know, same price, maybe, but there's less in it or the prices have just increased and you have the same amount is uh, we've seen some crazy uh, increases. I mean, 30 percent increases on certain items and, and some even higher. And it's uh, it's it's a definitely uh, it's hitting people's pockets hard. So we. As we said earlier, we have to trust the Most High. He shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and esteem. We trust him. He is our source. He's our supplier. He's the one we depend on. He's the one we trust in. He is our father who loves us. And we trust him to lead, to guide, to provide, to supply what we need. We don't look at him as he's just some, you know, genie or anything like that. We rub a, rub a lamp and, you know. As for wishes, it's not that. It's a loving father who cares for his children, and we are to trust him and believe in him and rely on him. We must put our trust in him, and he will take care of us no matter what's going on. We, we just have to keep our belief in him. I would add to that that in the word, Yahushua warned us about this, and I don't know exactly what the scripture says, but it said a day's wages, I think, for a loaf of bread. It looks like we're in a time that's getting close to that because prices are going higher they're not going back lower but in that we can have shalom and we should keep our shalom because going back to what we said earlier he will provide but we have to trust him and look to him not look to what these people are telling us or being not allowing ourselves to be fearful or worrying because the word also tells us not to worry not to fear he will take care of us. If he takes care of the birds that are out in the world, the birds in the field, he, he knows how to take care, of his, his, take care of his children, and he will do just that. If we trust him and look to him as our source, not the job, not anything else, not our parents, him. That's right. All right. Eclipse sickness says people claim to have side effects like headaches, dizziness, and nausea. And doctors weigh in. True illness from experiencing the eclipse is unlikely. It says the solar eclipse was a huge deal in the U.S. yesterday. So this was, I guess, from Tuesday last week, the 9th. With people across the country stopping to check out the astronomical event as it happened in the middle of the afternoon. But some people also claim that the event made them feel off health-wise in something that's now being called eclipse sickness. Any of you also experience headaches? Because of the solar eclipse, one person wrote on X, formerly Twitter. Honestly, same. I just realized it's so bad and painkillers won't even work. OMG, another said in the comments. This just 
uh, let's see this just has me wiped out feeling weird someone else wrote on x people even linked weird menstrual cycles to the eclipse did anyone else get their period today a concerned person wrote i'm two weeks early and have only had an irregular cycle like four times in my life yeah so that's kind of strange you know i don't know if it's uh, in relation to what was taking place prior i mean a lot of things being sprayed in the air uh, you know well i've never heard of any type of eclipse sicknesses before we've seen eclipses before uh before this time we saw the one last year in 23 2023 the one in 2017 those were we saw partial eclipses but uh didn't hear anything about that then let's take a quick look at this video and see what we see here Okay, we have Civil War star Kirsten Dunst says, film really terrified me. Actress Kirsten, is it Kirsten or Kirsten? Kirsten. I, I don't watch a lot of movies, so Kirsten forgive me for misspeaking her name. Uh, I think it's Kirsten. Kirsten Dunst tells Sky News the script of her new film really terrified her as it explores a U.S. at war with itself more than 150 years after the Civil War. So the film depicts a modern day America that is divided and at war with itself. It says it's more than 150 years since the American Civil War, but an Oscar nominated director, but in Oscar nominated director Alex Garland's new film, the present day United States is divided and the country is at war with itself again. In Civil War, Kirsten Dur Dunst plays photojournalist Lee, who braves the lawless front, front lines for an exclusive interview with the president, played by Nick Offerman. And we have a video. Let's check that out. I think that um, that, that is also a symptom of the media and trying to drive division, because really, you know, everybody's a human being with a story. And I don't think that, um, that that is a product of, you know, just someone growing up in their environment. You know, I really believe that like this polarization is something that is, is kind of being fed and like heightened in a way, which makes you believe more and more. And I think that those groups are very small, um, but, very scary yeah it's interesting about this uh you know if you realize in movies they do a lot of predictive programming so uh i'm not sure if you saw the movie done by obama i can't even think of the name it was on netflix uh leave the world behind and uh, a lot of the predictive programming of things that are being planned to be uh done in the future this seems like one of those as well we didn't watch the movie so we don't know what this movie's about but you know we did see a preview for this uh whatever civil war movie it's uh kind of interesting there's been a lot of things that seem as if there is this you know stuff in the media to try to push for civil war uh in the u.s and you know ultimately to cause disruption in, in society and then all they can bring in their one world system and their anti one who is going to lead it and you know again with all these things scripture has already talks about a lot of this stuff and if not uh, most of these things that we've discussed and we just keep our eyes looking up knowing our redemption draws near and we don't know when that time will be but we just keep our belief and trust in the most high and know that he's going to lead and guide us and direct us and no matter what comes about we keep our belief in him and trusting in him Amen and amen. Okay. Our next video uh, article 
It says, with New Jersey earthquakes fault still not found, researchers deploy new aftershock sensors. So the U.S. Geological Survey has already recorded at least 50 aftershocks since the 4.8 magnitude earthquake last week. Scientists have yet to pinpoint the fault that ruptured in New Jersey on April 5th and rattled much of the Northeast. Now, U.S. Geological Survey researchers are in the process of installing new monitoring equipment to better measure aftershocks and help solve that mystery. Let's see. I think that's all we have on that story. All right. Yeah, if you want to read more, you can look at that on uh, NBC News. All right, so what's this? This is a 16-year-old boy was arrested, charged after a 60-year-old woman attacked outside Queens Church. A 16-year-old boy has been arrested and charged in connection to a vicious attack and mugging of a 68-year-old woman outside a church in Queens. The teen was arrested Thursday on charges including robbery, assault, grand larceny, and criminal possession of stolen property. The attack happened Sunday morning outside St. Demetrio's Greek Orthodox Church in Jamaica Hills. I think there's a little video here. You can look at it real quick here. Breaking news in Queens, a 16-year-old boy, now charged with that attack where a 68-year-old woman was thrown down the steps of her church. Police have not released his name. The charges against him include assault and robbery. Now, earlier today, relatives of the victim, Irene Talian Boris, released pictures of her and said they'd set up a GoFundMe page. The attack put her in the ICU with a fractured skull and a brain bleed. That's sad. It's, uh... People just seem, I don't know if you've noticed it, but it seems people are getting worse and worse these days. I mean, you go out and about and people are more angry, people are more frustrated, people are more in a rush, people are more just, just bothered, bitter, just just mean. You know, it's, uh, we definitely want, <laughs> that's why we, we pray before we go out, that he that the Most High would lead us, that we'd go where we're supposed to go and not be in places that we're not supposed to be, that we're at the right place at the right time with the right people and so on, because we want to make sure that we are, are, you know where we're supposed to be and and sometimes if you know we're going to go out we, we maybe we shouldn't go out at that time so we we don't but it's uh it's sad i mean it's it's just sad sad situation there all right last thing we have on here for this week uh, says prophecy for sale quote unquote profits mimic psychics charging up to 555 dollars per phone call you got to be watchful with these people calling themselves prophets i mean it's don't fall for this stuff you know if you if you realize in scripture, the prophets, when you look at the original testament, they didn't get anything wrong. There was no error in, in their prophecies. Their prophecies came to pass. There are things that, that are still coming going to come to pass in these last days. But we can see that there was no error in the prophecies that were given. Most of them have come to pass, some haven't yet. But these prophets of today who are let me say it this way, these so called prophets of today, the ones self proclaimed prophets, they want to proclaim and prophesy all these good stuff and wonderful things and and it, it for one it doesn't line up with scripture and most of the time it's just to get people excited to give you know some offering or donation or something like that to to get people stirred up because most times there's there's a financial requirement according to these people in order for this prophecy to come to pass for their lives but i'll read this real quick and then we'll talk about it for a second uh, for a moment here after this it says some 27 years ago the prophet micah one that prophets, so-called prophets, tell fortunes for money. And that's according to, to Micah 311. It says the business of prophecy selling continues in 2024. This person, I guess, Pangani or Pangani, Java, the flamboyant Zimbabwe-born, but Baltimore, Baltimore sorry, Maryland-based preacher, better known as Prophet Passion Java, <laughs> Passion Coffee, I'll say. No, I don't know. Finances his, uh, his life, lavish lifestyle by preaching the prosperity gospel and charging his followers $555 for a phone calls. Wow. Passion Job is well known for wearing expensive designer clothing and driving high performance sports cars while attracting scrutiny from profits and watches. And his Instagram account, who cares? All right. Uh, yeah, watch out for these people. They're, they're, these people are, are Satan's prophets. They're not the most highest prophets. These people are liars and they're just trying to deceive and to lead people astray and to get money out of your pocket so be watchful of these people somebody call himself a so-called prophet 
it's just it's sad. These these days are some sad days that we're living in and we can still have joy because we have the most high, but it's sad to see the different things that are happening in the world. We just want to say with these videos, I mean with these articles that we're putting out, it's not to cause fear. It's to make you aware of the times that we're living in with the things that are going on in our timing and to see how they connect to what the word is saying. So ultimately, when we put these video, these uh, articles out, it's to draw you to the most high, regardless of what's going on, the articles, the things that are going on in the news, the things that are going around all around us, going on all around us. This is primarily to draw you to the most high Yahuwah because in these times as the, as, as the days get darker and we see the love of many waxing cold we need him for guidance for direction for insight for wisdom and so we put these articles out there to let you know this is what's going on around us but we got to keep our eyes on the most high we got to stay connected to his word we have to stay in prayer. We have to stay focused on him, keeping our eyes looking upward rather than what's below. So keep that in mind as we go through these videos in this time when we send out these news uh, articles and clips that it's just something that to know that what's going on around you, but to keep your eyes and focus on the most high. Yeah. And also to help you discern because life gets busy, it gets challenging, you know, you may be going through things, you know, whether it's financial, family, you know, some other type of health crisis, whatever it may be. I mean, we, we've all, we all deal with things, you know, through life. And the more you, the longer you live, the more things you probably go through. So as you heard, it, this is not a thing to fear. We're not to fear. We're commanded and told not to fear, not to worry, not to uh, put our eyes on the things of this world. We should be aware because we have to understand what the enemy's doing. We have to see these things. And of course, we draw into Yah. We listen to Yah. We listen to his word. We read his word. We, we spend time in prayer and being still and being quiet. And we did a, vid a video on being still, you know, sometime last year. Check that out because it's important to take time to just be quiet and be still. You know, we also take time on the Shabbat and, and take a day of rest and just quiet our minds down and, and rest, you know. We're not telling you what to do, whether you should or shouldn't do that. That's that's not for us to say. Uh, but it's important to take time to be still and, and listen and quiet your mind and quiet yourself down from the things going on in this world. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. Uh, we hope to see you back next time. You know, we're, we appreciate you, uh, our family. And if you know of something that you want to share with the, the larger group and our family together as uh, those who have discerning minds, Feel free to send that to us at info at discerningminds.com. Uh, definitely, we're a family and we want to help each other out. So if you find something or see something out there, please send it to us so that we can share it with the uh, wider group and, and audience here. So well, thank you ahead of time. And we, we thank you for listening. We thank you for your support, your love, your prayers. We need it. We're praying for you and your family. And we love you all. We thank you for, for joining us. Until next time, family. Shalom. Shalom.